let me tell you some stories of our Mission Possible teachers. These are young professionals who we place in schools and support through an incredible journey of personal transformation to become inspirational leaders of tomorrow. Rasma was a student in my 10th grade English class. She liked music and fashion and um, arts, but not English, for she'd never really thoroughly studied it. I wanted for that to change. I tried to engage her in my lessons, but many a lesson would pass by and she wouldn't say a word. I was persistent. I insisted. Step by step, word by word, she would say some three uh, word sentences and nod. I accepted any response, but I don't know, or silence. Rasma was shocked. She tried to avoid me for a while. Um, three months passed, and as we had a class discussion about school and why it was necessary, uh, it was coming to an end already, and Rasma raised her hand because she wanted to speak. That was a superb moment for both of us. Since then, she draws smiley faces on all her tests, regardless of the results, and she's a regular participant in class, and she um, does all her homework. In my first year of teaching, I was assigned a class of uh, 23 fifth graders. It was a tough situation. Uh, more than two-thirds of the kids were actually failing school. I had to do something about it, and I decided to involve their parents. We held regular study evenings where we tried to make up to learn math and English in an engaging way. We used games and informal conversations to really also build the class spirit. I encouraged parents to identify the strength and improvement areas of their kids, and we jointly set goals. Month by month, we monitored the results, and their motivation and performance improved quickly. There are many teachers in Latvian classrooms who can tell such stories, but we need many, many more of them. We need 200,000 such stories every year. That's the number of kids attending school in Latvia right now. We have kids with great ambition to become bank presidents and neuroscientists and diplomats. But we have kids who've lost their faith in their, in their ability to accomplish anything. They're happy with average performance. At school, they've learned that deadlines don't matter. You can negotiate anything. Um, and as long as you pass in some work, that's enough. We have um, adults who believe they can't learn math or science because it's too hard for them. We have carpenters and construction workers who each need a supervisor to monitor implementation of every simple task. We have doctors, lawyers, teachers, and politicians who cannot exercise their professional responsibility. We have adults who haven't learned to take charge of their lives while in school. Change is slow and hard to come by in schools, traditionally very, very conservative institutions. If we implemented anything we're talking about today in education reform, it would be too late for those kids entering first grade this year. We need a radical shift in the mindset of adults affecting kids' lives every day. Parents, teachers, business people, politicians, neighbors, and bus conductors. What we've seen, what's obvious, is that legislative and administrative decisions and actions haven't been enough. In this country, for 15 years, teachers actually have been free to design their own curricula, to select their textbooks, to craft their own teaching methods. But many of them don't even know that. Many are hiding behind in the comfort of recommended procedures to exercise their professional responsibility. That's why we place mission possible teachers in schools to question any assumption about how things have been done so attack problems in their heads to actually do what needs to be done in order to change the education for the kids. Because schools are not because we need a place to park all information humanity has ever accumulated in their lifetime. Schools are not a place because teachers must have jobs. And schools are not a place because we can't find another use for an old building. Schools are places where kids can find their passion and become productive and happy citizens. But before there can be children's success stories, we need teacher stories. And let me tell you of a story of a Mission Possible participant and what it actually take to uh, be in school. This is Igor, um, who 
came to Mission Possible as a graduate of Stockholm School in of Economics in Riga. After a high profile tenure as the head of the Latvian Student Association, he came to us with the ambition to be one day Minister of Education. He sought greater insight in how schools operated and what kids needed. He taught in a school of about 450 kids nearby Riga. Um, he taught math to seventh and eighth graders and economics to high school kids. The school was located in quite an affluent local authority, but uh, neither kids nor their teachers had high aspirations for who they can be or what they can become. Igor did not have an easy time being a teacher. He spent a lot of his energy in power struggles in the classroom. He had low expectations of the kids. He didn't see that all of them could actually learn math and projected his lack of beliefs, which then showed in their behaviors and their performance. After his first semester in January, he told us we'd made a mistake selecting him for the program. When we reminded him that he actually had come with the ambition to become Minister of Education, he said, well, I didn't really need that first-hand experience to be one. I could have found out about what I needed to know from doing some research or um, from doing a survey. Sounds familiar sometimes when you heard this somewhere else. Towards the end of the first school year, it was clear that many, many of his kids were failing his math class. He shifted into a crisis leadership mode. Um, he um, came up with a highly structured plan, used draconian methods, invested countless hours in individual tutoring, and his kids pulled through. They successfully finished the school year. The outcome was achieved, but the journey left a lot to be desired. We continuously affirmed our faith in his ability to become a great teacher and leader. He got a lot of feedback from his mentors, and most importantly from kids, on how his beliefs and his behavior reflected in the learning. The turning point came when, in his third semester, Igor went on a study trip to the United Kingdom to visit schools in challenging circumstances with a lot of kids from low-income neighborhoods, um, many, many recent immigrant um, kids. There he saw what a committed group of teachers and principals can say to put kids in a transformational life path. He came back with a re renewed sense of agency. He had found it in himself. He now saw it, that he can be the change. His fourth semester in school was a great success. He, he had decided that his goals for the students would be to have them take responsibility of the learning. He designed a visual flowchart for every one of his lessons with very clear outcomes for what he wanted the kids to achieve with clear steps and exercises they had to do in order to get there. Um, kids could work at their own pace. He spent no more than four or five minutes in front of the class instructing them. He was there to guide and provide support as necessary. Now it was about them, about the kids. Igor shared upon graduation from the program his most significant lesson he, he learned. The lesson he learned is that all kids can and are willing to learn. If we think that they can't or that they're not willing to, it simply means that the teacher hasn't found the key, that they, they need to be looking. It's a philosophy of the strongest, he said, for it's really hard. You've invested countless hours in preparation and yet failed to meet another challenge. And it's so easy then to blame everybody else, the parents, the school, the lack of consistency with the principal, everybody else but you but such a behavior is not productive for you haven't found the key. It is about the locksmith, not the key lock. Igor is the first ambassador from the program who has become a school principal after two years of teaching in school. He is now responsible for improving the life chances of 260 kids from kindergarten through grade nine. One of the first things he did as school principal was introduce a values program in a school or a character building program. Together with the teachers and kids and parents, they identified five character traits that they wanted to cultivate to build in the kids as they graduate. These were determination, persistence, responsibility, honesty, and respect. Any staff member in the school, from teachers to the cleaning ladies, could assign kids 
little tokens of appreciation when they demonstrated behaviors in accordance with these values. Now, the first reaction from the teachers as the program was being introduced was, we need written guidelines for when the stickers should be given. A very typical, let's have a scripted, document everything approach in education that we see from bottom to top. Igor refused to go down that path. He learned his leadership lesson. Instead, every Monday morning when they had their staff meeting, teachers share examples from when they gave kids stickers for their behaviors. It's become a shared learning experience, an opportunity for them to take responsibility for what they do as kids, because it's all a matter of professional freedom, not regulations, not rules, not guidelines. Um, recently, as we talked with Igor, he shared his less, most important lesson as a school principal. He thought, well, in order to improve teacher performance initially, that what he'd need to do is to pressure them into setting ambitious and measurable goals for the kids, and then go after them, monitor that teachers really do it, and they, that these goals get achieved. Instead, he's understood that it's about respect and dignity, and treating them as professionals, and giving them time and allowing them to develop their own ideas. And that's what it looks like in this school right now. Transforming the lives of thousands of kids will take more teachers who see teaching as an act of leadership. It's not about mind-boggling out of this earth teaching methods. It's not even about state-of-the-art technology. Even all of those things can help. But it is about professionals making decisions on a daily basis about professional freedom to set ambitious goals for the kids, to invest children and their parents and other significant adults in achieving them, to be able to plan effectively, to execute your plans, to be able to create a learning environment where kids can thrive. And most importantly, to be continuously evaluating your work and asking whether you've removed all the roadblocks, roadblocks to kid learning. Having been in education for about 20 years now, this is my dream job, to be able to, do, to start at the beginning, uh, to form future teachers and leaders. But believe me, it's incredibly hard. It requires unshaken belief in human ability to change for the better. An ability to keep a straight face when you observe quite a few less than perfect lessons during the process. A deep conviction that youthful, sky is the limit ambition and humility can make great bedfellows. And most importantly, relentless, relentless cultivation of a proactive, problem-solving mindset. The message is clear. You can't be sitting and whining about how bad everybody is or how bad everything is. The message is, what can you do to make things better? And we see that the message is getting through the, to the kids. What can I do to take charge of my destiny? Thank you.